This was actually the first meeting uh, for the Presidential Ambassadors for Global Entrepreneurship. Um, what, what did you think? Give us your reaction to what was talked about, uh, and how do you see this panel and this group helping to develop the next generation of entrepreneurs? I would say it was one of the most exciting days I've had in a long time. And I think what was talked about is how do we focus because there's so many fantastic ideas and we just really need to just pick our battles and, and see where we can help most. Well, how can you help most? I mean, how do you, how do you get young entrepreneurs uh, engaged, involved, and, and to the point where they can be successful? Well, I think it's about hard work, tenacity, and having that passion and great idea. But we can also talk about what we have been through. And we can show them that it's not always exactly what you may seem. Entrepreneur entrepreneurial companies are, are hard, and they need to be buckled up and ready to go. So we can give them some of the, the knowledge of our experiences. Mm -hmm. So you give them the knowledge of your experiences. Steve, are there other things that can be done? I mean, is there a policy that we should be putting in place or that Washington should be looking at to help spur some of this? Well, this global ambassador effort builds on some of the work that's already happened, such as the Startup America Partnership and the Jobs Act, Jumpstarting Our Business Startups Act. Actually, the president signed here at the White House two years ago this past uh, Saturday. They legalized crowdfunding. They made it easier for entrepreneurs to get access to capital, create an on-ramp for, for IPOs. There's also work underway uh, now on immigration reform. So we win the global battle for talent. Now the focus is really on the House leadership kind of taking the next step this, uh, this summer. So there are some policy things that need to be done. But also there's a lot of uh, role for just selling celebrating entrepreneurs, and that's what uh, entrepreneurs like uh, Tori and the others that are part of this PAGE effort can do both in this country, trying to lift up regions all around the country that don't have the same entrepreneurial momentum that Silicon Valley has or New York City has, as well as lifting up the world. We're only going to have a safe, secure world if it's stable from a security standpoint, but also prosperous. And that innovation, that economic growth, that job creation is going to come from the work of entrepreneurs. And that's what this global ambassador effort is designed to help inspire. Well, innovation really is the key uh, for our country and has been the key for our success. Tori, let me go back to you. Steve brought up something that's very interesting and very challenging for young entrepreneurs right now, and that's access to capital. Give us a little bit of your personal story. I mean, how did you uh, get that initial access to capital? Uh, and, and what should people be doing that, that have ideas for startups? right now well there's I'll start with my story but in the beginning we put my ex-husband and I a small investment together and then I went out to friends and family and I would say raised the next amount of money but it was almost 150 investors and so it was really about contacting people and I I took it very seriously taking people's money so I would say to them please invest if you want to be prepared to lose it because I was so nervous to invest it so I think uh, Paige has a great opportunity to really help people around the world get access to capital. So that's something we're going to be looking at. Mm -hmm. Access to capital is challenging. Uh, you had a sort of angel round, Tori. Um, Steve, should there be more programs to you know, help people that maybe don't have the friends and family network to go to initially? That's, that, that's actually why the, the president recommended and then Eric Cantor, the majority leader in the House, supported and then the House and the Senate passed two years ago the JOBS Act that legalized crowdfunding for exactly that reason. There are a lot of people who have great ideas and don't have the money or don't have friends who have the money and they never get a shot in this country. And crowdfunding will allow you to use the internet to raise the money. It, it already exists now for projects. You can raise things on Kickstarter for you want to build a documentary or create a hardware product. You haven't been able to do it for companies in terms of debt or equity crowdfunding. That law was passed two years ago. We're still frankly waiting for the SEC to finalize the rules so that can be put into place. Hopefully Hopefully that will happen soon because there's thousands, maybe tens of thousands of entrepreneurs all over the country and communities that need jobs who have great ideas but don't have that initial capital they need to, you know, to get started. Mark Zuckerberg happened when he started Facebook, happened to be at Harvard and happened to have a rich friend across the hall. But most people aren't at Harvard and most people don't have a friend, a rich friend. And crowdfunding can really level the playing field, democratize access to entrepreneurship, democratize access to investing. So it's very important. The, the White House and Congress did its job two years ago, passed this law. The SEC now needs to finalize the rules so entrepreneurs all over the country can benefit. Yeah, some good points on the democratization of uh, financing. Uh, Tori, let me, let me ask you, as we talk about businesses uh, growing and getting bigger and, and the importance of entrepreneurship, um, let me ask you specifically about your company. Women's Wear Daily is reporting that you're planning to uh, expand into yoga wear uh, as another line for your product. Uh, is that true? 
That is true. It's going to be more than yoga wear. We're, we're launching Tory Sport, and it's a whole startup once again. So for me, it's it's really interesting to really be doing a whole new concept and, and really starting from scratch. Having our company behind us will help. It's a crowded space. I mean, you, you've got uh, Lululemon, which has been obviously very big in the yoga wear space. Um, you know, you've got uh, Nike, which is also big. Uh, how do you expect to differentiate yourself? I think we have to say something different than what's being offered, and that's what we intend to do. That's How is it different? about entrepreneurship. Every, every, every crowded space means it's a big opportunity, and entrepreneurs always challenge the attacker, the, the, the existing companies, say, hey, we've got a better product, we have a better service, we have a better way. That's what drives our economy. That's what drives innovation. If it's, if it's not a crowded space, it's probably not a big enough opportunity. So you, the entrepreneurs usually do attack these big spaces, but need the tools, whether it be capital or, or talent or other things, to really have a, a chance to do that. Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, um, what's your advice, Tori, for those that are thinking about starting their own business right now? I would say find your passion and have a unique idea and be ready to work because at the end of the day it's hard work. It's so satisfying and you'll be so happy when you can go into work and not feel like it's working.